All right, this is my first blog, po blog post on um, Leadership Excellence by Pat Williams. Um, I guess first, um, it's one of these books that uh, I wasn't sure about at first, but and I'm not really the greatest or most enthusiastic reader on the planet, but once I picked it up, it's been a pretty easy read so far. So um, it was definitely cool to see uh, Bobby Bowden and General Tommy Franks uh, provide the Ford, and that's very um, just beneficial and cool to see guys that are very prominent in both of their fields uh, get so much out of this book. So, based on reading the first hundred pages or so of this book, it's easy to see Pat Williams is, is a fantastic storyteller. It's one of the, I guess, most probably easy to see aspects, but it's one that I found particularly in interesting. Um, it's easy to see how many of his stories just come to life off the page. I would definitely, from the moment that I picked up the book, um, I've always looked forward to seeing what's next. I would definitely want a chance in the future if he uh, speaks at events or something like that. That's something I would want. I would definitely want to see Pat Williams in real life because uh, the benefits would definitely be huge in that regard. Um, I know. Uh, I've seen videos of President Reagan and other notable figures Williams tells these stories of. The book gives us a better understanding of how those leaders actually led and the visions behind those leaders, ranging from uh, President Reagan to Walt Disney to JFK and even his brother RFK. Uh, you, you see Williams has a profound way of telling uh, these stories in leadership excellence. Um, he outlines a couple ways of how you tell a story. Uh, number one being be brief. Um, I know in my experiences, if you tell me a story that takes seven minutes and it should just take 45 seconds, I'm probably not going to be listening. He says that as the number one, um, reason or way to tell stories is to be be, be brief. Um, number two, uh, probably I, in my estimation, Williams' best quality in writing this book is how vivid he is. Um, his words in the book come to life off the page and really I can only imagine what they're like in person. Um, number three on his list is to use hand gestures or take action. Um, Number four is talk, never read. Uh, it makes the stories sound more personalized and organic when it's orated, not just read off a card. Um, which kind of leads into the fifth one, which is personalization in the stories. It helps the audience become uh, more personal and um, with the uh, leader. Uh, six is get to the point or the main thesis. The story needs to support the message that you're trying to um, portray and not be extraneous and just have a bunch of different information that really doesn't matter. And lastly, he says they need to develop or help identify with the audience. Uh, the Everman stories resonate more with the audience is what William says. It's important to remember that the story is not about the hearer. If it's not about the hearer, he will not listen. Um, it's important for leaders to know that the, the they're up there for the benefits of the audience and not the other way around. They're not just up there to hear themselves talk. Um, the best speeches I've ever heard have not come from PowerPoint slides with notes and stuff like that. Those are all great and all, but they most of them come straight from the heart. Uh, one instance, I remember when I was 11 years old, September 11th happened. Uh, I was a little bit ahead of my time in the fact that I always wanted to watch the news and... Um, just be informed on those things because I was just curious what would happen next. And um, there's two events that really I can remember. Uh, one of them, actually, when I was reading the second chapter, Pat Williams actually says one of them. And that's when uh, President Bush at the time was addressing the firefighters in the post 9-11 days. Um, He's got the bullhorn, and one of the firefighters, you can hear him in the back, just barely says, I can't hear you. Then the president really doesn't miss a beat, uh, responds with, I can hear you, the rest of the world can hear you, and 
the people that knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Um, it was an impromptu moment that the president portrayed confidence and spoke from the heart and was very important at uh, the timing that w based on what all was going on in our country. Another time, a couple years, or not a couple years, a couple a month or so later, uh, the World Series is in um, New York. And I believe it's the Yankees and Diamondbacks playing. And with all the security and all that stuff going on, uh, a lot of the players at the time didn't even know that the president was going to be throwing out the first pitch. Um, he goes out there and throws a perfect strike, and the crowd goes nuts. And in a very uneasy time, he again portrayed that confidence and determination when the country needed it most. Um, so uh, going forward, it really in getting back to what Williams is talking about, about storytelling, I just have one question as a teacher and coach, how can I incorporate storytelling um, into the classroom or onto the field? Maybe with past experiences and things like that, but um, I would just be curious to know how I could do that better. And it's something that I hope to get to the bottom of soon before and help it be more uh, beneficial for me in that aspect of communication.